Coppicing is a traditional method of woodland management, which takes advantage of the fact that many trees make new growth from the stump or roots if cut down. In subsequent years, many new shoots will emerge, and after a number of years, the coppice tree, or stool, is ready to be harvested, and the cycle begins again. Varying the length of the rotation will yield a different range of materials at the time of harvest. For instance, in a traditional hazel coppice, a tree grown on a short cycle of maybe four or five years would yield a high proportion of slim, straight shoots, or suckers, used for wattle, hurdles, thatching spars, and other agricultural and building requirements. A tree could also be grown on a longer cycle of up to 16 years, at which time it would be perfect for charcoal production, an economic mainstay of the hazel coppices up until their decline after the Second World War. Fortunately for us, coppiced hazel is a fantastic resource for river management, particularly the modern brand of soft engineering techniques. Let's have a look at some simple designs and the role they play in the river. First up is the faggot, a bundle of hazel brush laid lengthways and tied near the ends with untreated sisal string. I like to tie them in a variety of handy sizes between 1 and 2 metres in length and 30 to 60 centimetres in diameter to cope with a variety of depths and flow rates in the river. It is also a nice idea to tie some in a looser, bushy fashion, good for locking together to create large, faggoted areas, and some in a tighter, elongated manner, ideal for fashioning neat buns and edging for banks and islands. Faggots in context, a newly planted area. The faggots are pinned down with hazel stakes driven into the riverbed. Driving a screw or nail into the stakes somewhere near the top will hold the faggot down and any excess stake can be cut off with a saw. Here we see autumn planted faggots after a couple of months in the river. Already they are covered in plant life, mostly watercress, which has taken advantage of the matrix of brush to put down roots. These are faggots after a year in the river completely eaten by a mass of diverse plant species which provide bank protection, narrowing for the channel to improve flows, water cleaning by locking up nutrients and chemicals, and food and shelter for an array of all forms of life. Here is a section of narrowing using faggots. The width of the channel has been reduced by around half, speeding the flow in the right hand glide and creating a lush riparian zone on the left. Pre-faggoting, the area had had slack flows, severe silt deposition from the sheer crumbling bank on the left, a complete absence of plant life, and a very low value as a habitat. The basic faggot concept can also be morphed into other shapes to perform different functions. For instance, a V faggot can be made by strapping brush to an already forked V-shaped branch. Staked over areas of dirty gravel, they create a scour down each side, which cleans the gravel, plus a silt retaining slack in the centre of the V provides an excellent habitat for fish fry. Another favourite shape is the besom, a bundle of hazel tops with the cut ends laid together and firmly tied with string. These can be used similarly to V faggots or staked in deep water to help protect fish from predation. Their loose bushy structure makes them an ideal bolt hole for even quite large fish. Here's a besom planted in a pre-existing slack in deep water, defining the flow, trapping silt and providing cover. Here a few besoms have been planted in front of a faggoted area, sticking out at 45 degrees into the flow. This creates a very natural fuzzy edged effect. Hazel brush can also be used raw, i.e. not tied into any form of faggot. Here's an island with an outer edge of faggots and brush infill. The brush is held down by hazel rods pushed through the faggots on either bank of the island. When the faggots are staked to the riverbed, this pulls the horizontal rods down and clamps the brush in position. As well as creating a scour on either side and a slack at the rear, the island has the effect of doubling the available marginal area of the river along the length of the island, a useful aid in creating diverse habitat. Here, brush is clamped behind an oak retaining wall with horizontal rods driven into the sheer bank in the foreground to create a low brush shelf. 
It will perform all of the tasks of the large faggoted area seen earlier, and in many situations may be considerably quicker and easier to install. Following these early experiments, I would suggest that the oak retaining wall could be substituted for a row of faggots, skewered on the horizontals, and then staked down to clamp the brush, just the same as the island earlier. Using this system of brush clamped by faggots and horizontals, I see no end to the fantastically fuzzy edged designs that could be created to answer every channel narrowing and bank reinforcement requirement. When a mature hazel is coppiced, much of its bulk will be made up of large gnarly lengths from just above the stool. These make excellent firewood, and that's what happens to most of mine, but I like to plant a few of the biggest and gnarliest as groins. Groins are simply logs of wood, jutting into the flow at an upstream angle of around 45 degrees. Pointing them downstream can cause erosion to the near side bank, so an upstream angle is of utmost importance. Their role is to break the flow near the bank, discouraging erosion and promoting plant growth, and to energise the water out in the channel, creating a scour and a crease. Here, three staggered groins create a gentle meander in an otherwise tedious channel. Now let's have a look at how we go from a standing tree to a host of river-ready materials. These are all the tools you'll need for the felling, processing and installation of hazel in the river. The felling and trimming can be done with a hard point saw and good quality garden loppers. A chainsaw can be used by those who like it easy and dangerous. After trimming, a string and pen knife are all that's needed to render the tops into faggots. Also useful is a slasher or side axe for pointing stakes for driving into the riverbed. A chainmail glove is a health and safety aid. The final installation in the river will require a sledgehammer, a saw and a bucket. In this case, an ancient rat poison tub containing a claw hammer, a cordless drill, a load of second-hand six-inch nails and a few drill bits. Some waders are also a good idea unless it's very hot, and it usually is when you're driving stakes through gravel with a sledgehammer. Using the cordless drill, pre-drill the stakes near the top at right angles and knock in a nail with the claw hammer. Put the faggot in its final position and pierce it with the stake, then drive the stake home with the sledgehammer. These stakes are around 60 centimeters long for small faggots in shallow water. As mentioned earlier, Different length coppice cycles will yield different materials, so if you think your river is in particular need of faggot products, you could pay to coppice some trees on a staggered four or five year cycle, at which time the majority of their bulk will be made up of small rods and brush. Their size also makes them easy to fell and process. If however you want the full range of materials from stakes to groins, then the full 16 year coppice cycle is probably the best bet. Here we can see some rods in the foreground, groins and stakes towards the centre, and brush everywhere, a complete river restoration toolkit. It's good practice when coppicing to always cut the stems off at an angle so the rain can run off. This helps prevent the stool from rotting out. An important element of the original coppice systems was the burning of brush on site to return potash to the soil, thus sustaining productivity. It's hard to reconcile this with the removal of brush for river work, but a compromise is possible through the burning of the medium-sized forked and twisted pieces, otherwise of no great use in the river. This can be done on site, or if you want to use the wood for fuel, by conscientiously gathering all the ash from your fire and scattering it back at the original coppice site. This is a typical wood pile comprised of river work leftovers. For further information on this subject, visit the Wild Trout Trust website.